Hello again, AP Physics students. The next lecture is on special derivatives. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this lecture into two separate parts. So in the first part, we're going to talk about another rule, another derivative rule referred to as the chain rule, which is going to allow us to figure out the derivative of some slightly more difficult functions. And then in the second part of the lecture, part two, we'll look at some of the derivative of different types of functions like trigonometric functions and also logarithmic functions. Uh, but we'll worry about that part a little bit later. Okay, so let's start off by talking about the chain rule. Now let's consider the function y equals f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 6. And that entire function, x squared plus 4x plus 6, or that expression, is being raised to the power of 5. Now, you can't really use the power rule to, to deal with this function. I mean, you could. I mean, the way you could do it is you would have to take this function and write it as the repeated multiplication of x squared plus 4x plus 6, 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 x squared plus 4x plus 6. Now, if you wanted to, you could carry out the trinomial multiplication of like all five of those different expressions, uh, in which case I'll talk to you in one year from now. That's probably how long it's going to take you to do it. Uh, so that is, I mean, if, but if you did do that, you would get a bunch of separate terms that you could apply the power rule to. However, it's just not practical. I mean, like what would happen if the exponent was like to the power of 100? Like, There's no way you're actually going to to do that. So we need to look at a different way to actually figure out the derivative of this function. Okay. So I said we could find the derivative of this function by first expanding the polynomial and then differentiating each individual term. But before you even try to do that, you can, you can already identify that would just take way too long, especially if the exponent starts to get like really, really big. Instead, what we can do is we can figure out the derivative of a function of this nature by using something called the chain rule. And what the chain rule does is it involves making some type of a clever substitution. And by making a clever substitution, we can actually save ourselves probably like almost like hours of work in terms of like how long it would actually take to expand that thing if you wanted to do the trinomial expansion. Okay, now. I'm going to show you what the chain rule looks like in terms of an equation, and then what I'm going to do is go through a couple of examples that show how we can actually implement the chain rule by applying a substitution. So this is what the chain rule tells us. The chain rule tells us that if you have a function, so you have f as a function of x, and you want to find the derivative of that function with respect to x, you can actually calculate the derivative of that function by finding the derivative of two other functions. So df dx would be equal to df du times du dx. So df du would be the derivative of function f with respect to u, and then du dx would be the derivative of function u with respect to x. But you're, you're immediately wondering, what are you talking about? Like, where is a u in this equation? Well, we're going to need to do a substitution to implement that. And that's what I'll show you in the examples here. Okay. So I want to differentiate the following using the chain rule. Okay, now, the substitution I'm going to make is uh, I could figure out the derivative of this function to a raised power of 5 if I just had a single term inside of the, uh, inside of the brackets. So the substitution I'm going to make here is I'm going to take everything inside of the brackets and raise to this power, and I'm going to set it equal to a single variable. Okay, I'm going to do a substitution. 
So what I'm going to say here is, is let's let u equal to x squared plus 4x plus 6. Okay, so I'm going to make a little substitution. If I do that, then I could write down this function, this as a function of u. I could write down f of u would be equal to u to the power of 5. So all I've done here is I've identified, okay, I, I can't take the derivative right now because I have too many terms in the brackets. So let's do a substitution so I have a single term. We'll call that uh, that one term u, and we're going to set it to everything in the brackets, x squared plus 4x plus 6. Now, if I replace x squared plus 4x with 6, then uh, this expression, this equation would then be u to the power of 5. Now, you can't write it as f of x equals u to the power of 5 because uh, you're now expressing it in terms of u instead of x. So it's now f of u would be u to the power of 5. Okay, now let's see how this chain rule actually works out, okay? So if I go back here, my chain rule tells me that, we'll write it up here, df dx is the derivative of f with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, now this first equation here, this first equation is actually a function u, u as a function of x. And this one is f as a function of u. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the derivative of f with respect to u first. Okay, so let's do that. We'll do df du, which means we're going to take this function and figure out the derivative of the function f with respect to u. Okay, so all we have to do to do this is apply the power rule. So the power rule will just involve take the 5, move it in front, and then the power would then turn to 5 minus 1. Therefore, I'd have df du would be equal to 5 u to the power of 4. Okay, I'm just going to highlight this with a different color. So df du is 5u to the power of 4. Okay, so I figured out the first part of this, df du. Now, I also want to figure out what the other part is. I want to figure out what is the derivative of u with respect to x. So that's going to involve this equation at the very top here. Okay, so we're going to do the derivative of u with respect to x. Now to figure out the derivative of this function, we can just use a combination of the power rule, the constant multiple rule, and the sum rule. So again, the sum rule tells us we can figure out the derivative of each term individually and then just add them all together. So the derivative of u with respect to x is, well, the derivative of x squared would be, move the two to the front, and then the power would be two minus one, and then we have plus, again, the constant, you can just put on the outside, uh, and then take the derivative of x. Now, I should mention, anytime you take the derivative of x, okay, so if you just have like x on its own like this, that's x to the power of 1, taking the derivative of x would always just turn it into, you move the 1 in front, and then it would be 1 minus 1. Okay, so that's always going to turn it into 1x to the power of 0, or just 1. So the derivative of x will always just be 1. Therefore, the derivative of uh, 4 times x would just be 4 times 1, okay? Plus 4 times the derivative of x would just be 1. And then we add, what's the derivative of a constant term? Remember, a constant term, if you plot it as a function, would be a horizontal line. Therefore, its derivative or slope would just be equal to zero. Therefore, we'd have 
du dx would be equal to, okay, this would turn into 2x plus 4. Okay, I'm going to box this with a different color. So let's do it in green here. So this is du dx. Now, what the chain rule tells me, okay, the chain rule tells me that D, uh, df dx is equal to df du multiplied by du dx. And by the way, if you're wondering why that, that could be confirmed to be true, uh, you could just cancel off the two du's up here just to get df dx. So we're introducing two separate derivatives to kind of like get around this problem of having multiple terms inside of the brackets. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression for df du and plug it in here. And then I'm going to take this expression for du dx and I'm going to plug it in right there. So that's going to turn it into, this would then be, okay, so you'd have 5u to the power of 4 multiply by 2x plus 4. Now we need to make a little we're going to go backwards and make another substitution now because what I want is I want the I want the derivative of f with respect to x. I don't want this u in here anymore. So now I'm going to do a backward substitution. I'm going to get rid of it, okay? Because we know u is actually equal to x squared plus 4x plus 6. So when I write this out, I'm actually going to expand, I'm going to plug this u term back in here. Okay, we're going to replace the u, u with x squared plus 4x plus 6. So what that would then look like is you would then have df dx would then be equal to, we'd have 5 and then I'd have x squared plus 4x plus 6, all raised to the power of 4, multiply by 2x plus 4. And we can get rid of some of these, these square brackets here. We could just write this as uh, df dx would be equal to 5x squared plus 4x plus 6 multiplied by, oh, to the power of 4 times 2x plus 4. Okay, and that's what my derivative is equal to. So it's 5x squared plus 4x plus 6, and then 2x plus 4. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually do like one more, uh, you, you could factor one other thing out to like maybe like a, a further simplified. Okay, I'm not going to show it though, but uh, in this second uh, set of brackets here, you could actually factor out a common 2. And then you could turn that uh, 5 into a 10 if you actually factored out the 2. But I'm not going to go that far. Okay, this next one, we have y is equal to uh, 8 divided by the square root of 3x plus 4. So really the time we want to use the, the actual chain rule is, is in a situation where uh, we, we, we are raising something to an exponent, except instead of raising a single term to an exponent, we're stuck with raising an expression to an actual exponent. Now, I'm gonna start off by rewriting this one out a little bit, okay? So let's rewrite it out so we can actually see the exponent. So this will be the same thing as writing down y is equal to eight divided by, and this would be, the square root is the same thing as three x plus four to the power of one half. But let's move this guy out of the denominator so we can write down y is equal to 8, 3x plus 4 to the power of negative 1 
over 2. Okay, now the problem here is I, I, I could use the power rule if I just had a single term inside the brackets, but I have multiple terms inside the brackets. And that's going to be the dead giveaway in terms of when you need to use the chain rule. Anytime that you raise an expression, so an expression has like more than, like when I say an expression, I mean uh, binomial, ex binomial expression or higher. So you have like multiple terms in brackets, you're going to have to use the chain rule. If it's a single term that's, that you're raising it to the power of, you can simply just go ahead and use the power rule. Okay, so the question is like, okay, what kind of substitution do I make here? Well, the substitution you'll always make is whatever is uh, inside the brackets raised to the power, that's what we're going to set u equal to, okay? So in this case here, we're going to say let u equal 3x plus 4, okay? And that is u as a function of x. Now, if you do that replacement, it would turn this equation into, you would then have, uh, we could write it in function notation if I wanted. I could write down f of u would then be equal to 8u to the negative 1 half. 8u to the negative one half, okay? Now, we're gonna figure out the derivative of these two different functions individually. So let's figure out the derivative of f with respect to u first. So df du would be equal to, okay, we use the constant multiple rule here, so that eight doesn't get affected at all. And then we use the power rule to take care of the u to the negative one half. So we're going to move that negative one half in front of the variable. And then the rest of it, you take the exponent, negative one half, and you subtract one. Okay, that's going to give you df du would then be equal to Okay, this would be negative 8 over 2, and then you'd have u, negative 1 half minus 1 would be negative 3 over 2. Okay, so this will in turn df du would be negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, so you'd have negative 4 u to the negative 3 over 2. Okay, and we're going to box this in purple. Okay, so that's df du. df du is negative 4u to the negative 3 over 2. Okay. Uh, now, the second part of the chain rule involves figuring out what du dx is. Okay, so du dx would be, okay, so what's the derivative of u with respect to x? Okay, the derivative of 3x would just be 3, okay? Remember, the derivative of x just turns into 1. And the derivative of a constant term 4 would just be nothing. Therefore, your derivative of u with respect to x would just be 3. And again, that makes sense. Like, if you have u equals 3x plus 4, that would be a straight line that has a slope of 3. Therefore, the derivative of that should give me a slope that is going to be 3. Okay, so let's box that one, and we'll put it in green. And now we can apply the chain rule. Okay, so my chain rule tells me that the derivative of f with respect to x is equal to the derivative of f with respect to u multiplied by the derivative, yes, we don't have to write the multiplication symbol just imply that we're multiplying. The derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, so let's, plot, let's sub these uh, values in. Okay, so df du is negative 4 u to the power of 3 over 2. And then we're going to multiply by 3. 
But again, I want the derivative of my function with respect to x, not u, so I'm going to do a substitution to get rid of this. So again, but we know that u is equal to 3x plus 4. So I'm going to do a substitution, replace this u with 3x plus 4. Okay, so we're kind of undoing the substitution that we did. We have to do it temporarily just to, just to carry out the chain rule, but then we're going to undo it at the end here now. Okay, so this would then be df dx would be equal to, so this would then be negative 4, and then u is 3x plus 4 to the power of 3 over 2. Oh, uh, negative 3 over 2, right? Negative. Yeah, sorry about that. Negative 3 over 2. Yeah, because we moved that into the numerator. Okay, negative 3 over 2. And then we're going to just multiply by 3. Okay, so now just to write down the final answer, which is df dx. We can go 3 times negative 4, which would be negative 12. And if I want to write this with that so it has a positive exponent, I could just write it in the denominator. So then I could flip it. So then it would be 3x plus 4. And that's all to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, so that's what the derivative of that function with respect to x. And again, we had to utilize the chain rule to do this. So that's what this thing is called right here. So the chain rule. And again, the chain rule involves like this u substitution. Okay, so I'll start I'll stop this part of lecture number uh, 4 now, just introducing the chain rule. And then in the next lecture, uh, or the next part of lecture number four, we'll look at a bunch of specialized functions, like what's the derivative of uh, trigonometric functions and also of uh, exponential and logarithmic functions. And I will talk to you then.